Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It's good to be before you this morning. Uh, as I've been doing all week, I'm reading from the Church Fathers. And uh, because of the history of the Church Fathers, uh, not all of them are well known. Uh, I'll be reading from uh, someone called Commodianus. Uh, he's a Latin poet. He was lived around 250 AD. He is uh, quoted by other people, uh, but we have no photos of him. Uh, it's assumed he was from around Roman Africa, uh, Carthage, uh, because he's very similar to a writer called Cyprian, uh, who was the leader or center of uh, Latin Christianity uh, in the third century. Um, but again, you know, that's just based on how he writes. He's writing very similar to St. Cyprian, who we know is from Africa, Carthage, uh, or Alexandria. It just depends. Uh, but this is a, a group of, uh, I think he has 80 uh, poems uh, that are all very long. And uh, his quote or his uh, uh, contribution to this morning's uh, devotions are uh, the devotions that we're having on Friday, the 5th of February. Uh, it's called Troubled Ahead. It's uh, connected to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call on heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. So he's talking about trouble ahead. I want you to hear how potentially contemporary he sounds um, with the issue that he's dealing with. And he's writing in 250. We're in 2021. That was a while ago. So he writes, by thinking that you are safe, even though you fluctuate between Christianity and the world, you go on your way stripped of self-control and broken down by luxury. You are looking forward to so many things in vain. Why do you seek evil things? For you will account for everything you do when you die. Consider this, foolish one. Once you didn't exist and now you live. You didn't you don't know where you you don't know where you have come from, how you are sustained. You avoid the kind and excellent God of your life and your governor who wants you to live. You rely on yourself and turn your back to God. You drown yourself in darkness when you think you are living in the light. Why do you run into the synagogue of the Pharisees to find mercy from the one whom you deny and then go out again to seek healthy things? You hope to live between Christianity and the world and consequently you will die because punishments will be awarded, you ask. Who, you ask, who is he who has redeemed me from death that we may believe him? Ah, it won't be what you think, for those who live well will benefit after death. You, however, will be taken away to an evil place on the day you die. Will those who believe in Christ, while those who believe in Christ, will be led into a good place and will experience God's kindness, you who are double-minded will receive punishment of your soul and your torment will, be, will provoke you to cry out against your Christian brother. We have a whole group of people who are somewhere in between. And uh, he's not being harsh for harshness sake. He's not saying, I told you so. 
he's writing as if he's giving a warning to a dear friend. And that's what I really appreciate about some of the Christian fathers. Uh, they're so old, and yet they're dealing with stuff that uh, we deal with in our everyday lives. Let us continue with our morning devotion from Luther. Our reading comes from uh, Mark chapter 1, the gospel text for this Sunday. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. They told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, Jesus, <coughs> that evening at sundown, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit, permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to the desert to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found Jesus, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went out he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This morning's devotion comes from Ron Letness, and he writes, Jesus was tired. Loving others surfaces a rainbow of emotions and tests our endurance. Or perhaps Jesus needed to practice his daily prayer discipline. Jesus sought out solitude. A common mantra for retreat ministry is a place, of, a place apart to come together. A staff member of at Sky Ranch Lutheran Camp coined a phrase to define a camper's time apart, calling it sacred silence. Campers were to find a spot alone by Beaver Creek under a ponderosa pine or on a boulder overlooking the mummy range, they were given a phrase to repeat, Holy Jesus, speak to me of your truth. Pause, listen, repeat. Pause, listen, repeat. 30 minutes of solitude and prayer. We live in an age of 24-hour news cycles. Now add Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, etc. We have iPhones and iPads. We are forever connected, influenced, bombarded. Space is lost amidst the deluge. Silence seems an enemy. Into this cacophony, Jesus gives us a way forward, a place apart, and come together with me. Go to a place apart and come together with me. I misread that. The prayer this morning. Let us pray. Jesus of solitude, as I walk, bike, run, hike, or sit on a beach, speak to me of your truth. Amen. Now this morning I was going to read from Center for uh, Action and contemplation. They were featuring a poet. I figured the two poets uh, would go together, um, both from different in different languages. But uh, I read Steve also, so I'm going to conclude this morning with Steve. And he gives us words of hope as he talks about our fight with vi the virus. It looks like we still have to fight the virus for many more months to come. So I've been focusing on what will get us through such a protracted struggle. And I think I'm beginning to know what will work. It will be the simple things in life, 
the things we do naturally, <clears throat> talking on the phone to a friend, playing online with grandchildren, funny stories, long walks, favorite movies, and best books, time to sit in perfect stillness, time to do the chores, time to volunteer to help, patience and prayer, calmness and assurance, the energy of faith pulsing, pulsing just beneath the surface of life, full of hope, full of promise, old traditions, new discoveries, kindness and determination, truth and lots of it. Good leadership, accurate information, clear heads and honest hearts, people of every sort and condition, with no exception, learning how to trust, learning how to recreate community, grace and love and kindness and healing and vision. All of this will get us through. All of this and so much more. Your list will be as good as mine and as long and as hopeful. I wanted to end that with hope because this is what we're doing. We're living in hope. We are working towards together to make sure that we stay healthy, that our community is safe. We gather, albeit it's small numbers, but we gather so that we can, we can uh, uh, worship together. We gather carefully, socially distanced, so that we can be safe. Not 100%, but safer. Trusting and hoping that what we do will help. Is it the 100% solution? No. God has that. Will there always be complaints? Yeah, I'm getting used to them. But we continue. We're doing something. And that's the blessedness of hope. You do something hoping that it does what it needs to do. Have a good weekend. Be a blessing. Practice your protocols, social distancing, masking. We're going to be... Uh, social distancing and partying, Super Bowl party, online Zoom. So uh, if you didn't get your mail chimp, look in the junk box of your inbox. If you didn't find it, look for us on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to be reposting. You can IM me or text me, and I will um, get you the information to be at St. John's Zoom Super Bowl party. Um, it's for church members only. Sorry, public. And uh, be a blessing to a neighbor today. Be someone's miracle. Amen.